So, uh, today I shall discuss a very interesting problem in robotics. It is related to the theory of large deviations. We have a system of several robotic links connected to each other and they are these links are moving under the dynamics of a under dynamics created by an external potential or forces within this uh, for, or motor forces applied at the joints and so on. And we want to control such a system of links. It means we want to we want to adjust the inputs and the parameters of the system in such a way that the trajectory follows a desired trajectory. It, the, it fails to follow a desired desired trajectory because of the noise. So, I should just indicate to you how the whole problem is solved. You have one link like this which is a three dimensional robotic link located at the origin of, co of the coordinate system. This is a point P 1 on the first link and to this point P 1 you have another link which is attached. It is a three dimensional link and this is a point P 2 on this like that you have several links attached to each other and they are all moving. So, each one of them can move under with, with the base. So, for example, the second link can move with the base pivot as P 1, the third link can move with the base pivot as P 2, the first link can move with the, ba with the base pivot as the origin and so on. So, first I want to find, write down an expression for the kinetic energy of such a system of links. So, you choose any point r on the first link, any point r on the first link at time t equal to 0. Let us say at time t equal to 0 everything was aligned to be along the z axis. That means, the uh, it is parallel to the z axis. This is the situation at time t equal to 0 and at after time t it has arrived at this position. So, you assume that after time t a rotation r 1 t has been applied to the first link and after time and relative to the first link after time t and rotation r 2 t has applied has been applied to the second link around the base pivot p 1. Likewise, relative to the second second link a rotation r 3 t has been applied to the third link. So, these are called SO 3 matrices. Right, they are all SO 3 matrices and they are all described, they can all be described in terms of Eulerian angles. When you say that a matrix is in SO 3, it means that R transpose R is equal to an identity and determinant of R equal to 1. So, that is the proper rotation. Now, after time t any point on the first link moves to the point R 1 t multiplied by R. Right? I take a point R within the first link and after time t it moves to the point R 1 t R and so its velocity is given by this and its kinetic energy will be given by half integral magnitude of the velocity norm r dash t r square d 3 r over the first link namely the body of the first link b 1. b 1 is the region at time t equal to 0 occupied by the first link, b 2 is the region at time t equal to 0 occupied by the second link, b 3 is the region at time t equal to 0 occupied by the third link. So, this is the kinetic energy and obviously, this is a quadratic form in r dash t. This can be written as, this can be written as half the kinetic energy of the first link can be written as half integral r dash t r r transpose r dash t square r dash t trace of this trace of this d 3 r over the body of the first link which is b 1 which can also be written as half trace of r dash t into j 1 into r dash t transpose where j 1 is the moment of inertia tensor of the first link. So, j 1 is nothing but half integral of course, you should take the mass density also into account. So, that gives you the when you take the when you write down the expression for the kinetic energy it is equal to half rho mod r dash t acting acting on acting on r square d 3 r where the first link b 1 right mass mass density into velocity square. Uh, into the volume element. Mass density into the volume element gives you the mass within the volume element. So, this becomes the kinetic energy. So, you take rho, if you take rho into account it becomes this and the moment of inertia tensor is simply defined by d 3 r over b 1. This is a 3 cross 3 matrix, positive definite matrix, this is a 3 cross 3 positive definite matrix. So, this becomes the kinetic energy of the first link. What about the kinetic energy of the second link? Kinetic energy of the second link like this. So, after time t a rotation r this is p 1 after time t a rotation r t r 1 t was applied to this entire system and then after time t a rotation r 2 t I take a point r on the second link at time t equal to 0. So, after at time t equal to 0 I take a point on the second link and whereas, it has been transported that point r it has gone to a point first you will rotate it is rotating about p 1 with it has been rotated about p 1 with a rotation matrix r 2 t. So, R 1 t acting on P 1, R 1 t acting on P 1 
plus R two T. R two T has been acting. R two T is act acts along the vector joining acts. R two T R two T acts on the vector joining P one and R at time t where P one has moved to R t R one t P one, and uh, R has moved to R one t P one. So it is simply R one t acting on R minus R one t acting on P one. So this is the position of the point R. I take a point R on the second link at time t equal to zero, and at time t it has been transported to this point. That is R one t. This vector joining R and P, namely R minus P one, R minus P one, it undergoes a rotation. This whole vector undergoes a rotation R one t, and then it under this vector then further undergoes a rotation. First P one undergoes a rotation R one t. It moves to R one t P one. Then this whole vector undergoes a rotation R two t R one t relative to the fixed frame, because First, it underwent a rotation r1 t around this point, and then relative to this point p1, it underwent a rotation r2 t. So this composition gives you the general point on the second link, and its velocity. If I call this as v, let us say a point v2 uh, v2 tr, v2 tr will be equal to this is the position v2 tr will be the time derivative of this, namely v2 tr will be r1 dash t p1 plus it will be. Uh, Uh, it will be d by dt of r2 t r1 t multiplied by r minus p1, and then you take its norm square, multiply by the mass density rho, integrate over the body of the second link. So this body of the second link is given by b2. B2 is the body of the second link at time t equal to zero. This region. B1 is the body of the first link at time t equal to zero. So when you square it. And integrate out. Of course, you have to take a factor half when you write the kinetic energy. It will be uh, something like uh, if I call R two T R one T as a new, if I call R two T R one T as a new uh, rotation. Let us call S two T. Let us write S two T equal to R two T R one T. This is also a rotation. It's also an SO three matrix. SO three matrix. So it will be a quadratic form in S two T. It will it will be a quadratic form in S two dash T. The derivative of S two T. It will also be a quadratic form in the derivative of R one t. So, and S two S two t. You see, if you if you write down the norm square of this, it is the norm of the first vector square plus norm of the second vector square plus twice the inner product between the first vector and the second vector, and then you are integrating it out over the whole volume. So, if you look at uh, the moment of inertia of the second link, how do you define the moment moment of inertia of the second link? It is half. Integral rho r r minus r minus p1 into r minus p1 transpose d t r over b2. This is the moment of inertia of the second link. And in terms of this, I can write down that the kinetic energy of the second link is equal to. It will be a quadratic form in r1 dash t. It, let us call r1 t as s1. Let us call r1 t as s1 t. And let us call R two T R one T S S two T S two T and so on. You call R, the last link undergo. The, let us say it's there are D link. There are D link. So R D T R D T etc. R one T. This is S D T. So it will be a, the kinetic energy of the second link will be of the form. Uh, it will be of the form half R one dash T into. P1 into P1 transpose into R1 dash T, then trace of this, and then D3. There is no D3 R1 you are taking. So when you take D3 R1 and integrate out, it is the mass of the first link. Plus the second term will come out to be half trace of S2 dash T. Then here you have J2 into S2 dash T transpose plus a cross term twice. So it will be uh, uh, trace of R one T into P one into R transpose into R into uh, into uh, S two dash T D three R D three R and this integral is taken over the this the integral is taken over half it's taken over the body of the second link so this integral of R D three R will give you the center of mass. Mass of the second link times its center of mass. 
So, you will get such cross terms also. What is important is that R1 dash t has been written as S1 dash t. So, if you add like this the kinetic energy of all the links, what is the kinetic energy of the kth link? Kth link is located at this point. So, it undergoes a rotation R k t relative to the second link. Okay, this undergoes a rotation R1 t, this undergoes a rotation R2 t and etc. This undergoes a rotation R k t relative to the k minus 1th link. So, I put points pivotal points I denote them by p1, p2, etc., pk minus 1. So, the any point r on the kth link at time t equal to 0 after time t will go to r1 t acting on p1 that is what that is the position of where p1 has gone plus r2 t r1 t acting on p2 minus p1 ok acting on p2 minus p1 plus r3 t R2 T, R1 T acting on P3 minus P2, etc. R K T, etc. R1 T. Sorry, R3 T, it will be R2 T, R1 T acting on P2 minus P1 plus R3 T acting on uh, R3 T will act on uh, no R3 T, R3 T will act on. Uh, it will act on any point R has moved to that point. So, uh, there is a small error I have made. You see, you have to do it this way. You have the second link, you have the third link, and you have the first link. So, this is P1, this has moved, this is P1, this is P2, and this is uh, 0. So, this is the third link. Any point R on the third link at, at time t equal to 0, how, where does it moved after time t? The first, first you observe the position where R1 has moved. So, R P1 will move to R1 acting on P1, R1 t multiplied by P1 and then uh, at the same time P2, P2 moves to what? P2 moves to R2, R2 t multiplied by R2 t multiplied by R1 t multiplied by P2 minus P1. R, this is R1, this is R2. So, P, P2 has uh, P2 goes to R2 t multiplied by P2 minus P1. Okay. And then R then P a point R here in the third link will go to R3 t multiplied by R2 t multiplied by R1 t multiplied by R minus P1 multiplied by R minus uh, R minus P2. So it will be uh, where is the third point? Where is this point move? Just try to see. You are multiplying, you are first moving P2. So, R3 T will act on, R3 T will act on, uh, on the move point. So, it will act on R. R has moved under the, these two rotations to R2 R1 acting on R. And P2 has moved to, P2 has moved to R2 R1 acting on P. It was acting on P2. So, this will move to R3 T, R3 T acting on the difference of these two. So, it will be R3 T, R2 T, R1 T, R1 T acting on R minus P2. And likewise, you can calculate its derivative. So, uh, I think it is okay. The kth point, the a point R on the kth link will move to, and point R on the kth link will move to R1 T acting on P1 plus R2 T R1 T acting on P2 minus P1 etc. plus R K T into etc. R1 T acting on R minus P K minus 1 acting on R minus P K minus 1 right not on P1 it is P K minus 1 because uh, so you can calculate if you write R1 if you denote R1 T by S1 R2 R1 by S2 R K etc. R1 by S K then this can be written as any point on this can be written as S1 T P1 plus S2 T P2 minus P1 plus etc. plus S K T multiplied by R minus P K minus 1. And then you take its time derivative and take its norm square, it will be a quadratic form in the SK in the SJ, NJ, SJ dash, it will, be a, it will be a quadratic form in the time derivative of the matrices SK, SJ, S1 T, S2 T, etc. SGT with respect to time. And, uh, uh, 
those cro those cross terms can also be evaluated by simply looking at evaluating things of the form uh, things of the form you need things you need simply to evaluate the cross term you need these these integrals namely this over bk half okay into rho which is nothing but the the mass of the kth link times its uh, mass of the kth link times its center of gravity at time t equal to 0 i can call it as lk okay so if you write down the total expression for the kinetic energy of the system it will be summation kjt j goes from 1 to d that is the total kinetic energy of the system at time t and this will be a quadratic form in half trace sj dash t into j j k into s k dash t j and k going from 1 to d this is the total kinetic energy of all the links put together and your where your j j j will be identified with the moment of inertia of the jth link and these j j k s are obtained using the in terms of the center of masses of the different links so it becomes a quadratic form in a set of matrices and then you look at the potential energy of the system what will the potential energy of the system be first look at a case where you have just two links okay at time after time t you look at let us say the center of mass of the first link was at l1 then the center of mass of the second link was uh, was at a height l2 around about around p1 at a height at a, was at a point l2 relative to p1 the center of mass of the first link was at a point l1 relative to the origin and the second and the center of gravity of the second link was at a height was at the point l2 relative to the first link so what is the total kinetic energy of this the mass of the first link m1 times g times l1 dot e3 where e3 is the unit vector along the z axis the unit vector along the z axis is e, is e3 the unit vector along the x axis is e1 and the unit vector along the y axis is e2 so the projection of l1 along e3 that is the height of the center of mass of the first link above the ground at time t equal to 0 but now you are looking after time t so at after time t l1 has undergone a rotation r1t so l1 gets changed to this dot e3 so this is the potential energy of the first link which is clearly a, a linear function of the matrix r1t and r1t i am going to denote as s1t so what about the second link potential energy of the second link is u2 which is nothing but where is the at time uh, okay where is it located l2 after time t first you apply a rotation r1t to p1 and then you apply a rotation around p1 to uh, r2 r2t r1t into l2 minus p2 so this point which is at a, uh, the point the point the location the the position of the center of mass of the second link relative to p1 that position vector l2 minus p1 has moved to the point l2 minus has moved to the point let us move to this point because first you apply your rotation r1 to this link it will, it will take p1 to r1 t p1 and then you move l2 by a rotation r2 relative to the first link that means you apply r2 t r1 t acting on l2 or rather you apply r2 t acting on r1 t l1 l2 minus r1 t p1 because after you apply a rotation r1 t to the first link this position vector would have also rotated and it would have gone to r1 t l2 this position vector relative to p1 has moved by this much minus position vector p1 where the where the second link has been pivoted that has moved to r1 t p1 so this is r2 t r1 t into l2 minus p1 right it will be of this form so if you look at the potential if you look at the projection of this along the e3 axis and multiplied by rho g that will be the potential energy of the second link and r2 t r1 t is s1 t so you can see that the whole potential energy is simply a linear form in the skts which means that the total lagrangian of the robot as a function of let us call it as a function of these rotation matrices skt and sk dash t k equals 1 2 etc d this is the this is the lagrangian which is the total kinetic energy minus the total potential energy which is nothing but the sum of the total link kinetic energies minus the link potential energies and this can be written as this can be written as half summation j and k go from 1 to d trace of sk dash t j k j 
into S j dash t, a quadratic form in the S j s plus a linear form minus you can say summation, uh, summation it will be uh, a linear form. So, you can write it as S k t acting on uh, S k t acting on some vector let us call it as xi k with E k with E 3 k equals 1 to 1 to d, where these xi k's are defined in terms of the position vectors p 1, p 2, uh, etcetera and the center of mass uh, points l 1, l 2, etcetera at time t equal to 0. So, it is a linear function of the s k t's and you can write down the Euler Lagrange equations very easily for this system. In fact, it is better to convert to Euler angles and then write, but in the uh, you can for, you can write the uh, Euler Lagrange equations for the system of links for these rotation matrices by simply uh, without even go without even coordinatizing the without even coordinatizing these rotation matrices S k t in terms of Euler angles. You can write it in terms of abstract Lie group matrices namely S O 3 matrices S k t provided you take into account a constraint. You put a constraint you regard these S k t's as the new variables these are all 3 cross 3 matrices. You regard this as the new variables, but the constraint that you should satisfy is that S k transpose S k should be the identity. So, you write down the Euler Lagrange, you write down the Lagrangian taking it about this constraint. Then what are the constraint Lagrangian give? L c means constraint Lagrangian is given by half summation trace of S k dash t j k j into S j dash t k and j going from 1 to d minus summation uh, k goes from 1 to d then S k t multiplied by xi k comma e 3 ok and then you have to put a constraint. So, you introduce Lagrange multiplier matrices. Lagrange multiplier matrices are 3 cross 3 matrices and the constraint that you put is a trace of lambda k t into s k t transpose s k t minus i k goes from 1 to d. So, these lambda k t's these Lagrange multiplier functions constrain the s k t's to be real orthogonal matrix real orthogonal matrices with determinant 1 ok. So, these are the constraint equations and you can write down formally the Lagrange Euler Lagrange equations as delta L c by delta s k dash t d by d t minus delta L c by delta s k t equal to 0 is equal to now if, if there are no external torques then you would write equate this to 0 otherwise you will have to add put a torque term. So, let us call it as tau k t k t this is the external torque and likewise if you take the uh, this Lagrange multipliers are to be regarded as functions of s k s k dash and lambda k. So, if you take the variational derivative with respect to lambda k you simply get the constraint equations namely s k transpose s k t is equal to identity for each k. So, these form a complete system of equations which can be solved for. Now, uh, 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 now you just see this suppose uh, how do you compute the torque, how do you get an expression for the matrix torque it is very simple just look at first the first link it is moving around the origin and you are applying a torque to it by means of a motor attached at its pivot. Similarly, the second link moves around the first link with a motor attached to the first pivot. So, to compute the torque uh, uh, you uh, assume that you have a torque tensor, the torque tensor generated by the motor at the kth link is T k t. So, here you have at the uh, at the first at the first link you have a you have a motor torque of T 1 t at the second link you have a motor torque of T 2 t and uh, these torques how do you compute the effect of this torque on the rotation? What is the contribution of this torque to the Lagrangian? So, uh, normally when you have a to scalar torque tau k t and it rotates by an angle theta then the work done is tau k delta theta, where delta theta is the angle by which uh, by which uh, the rod or the system has rotated for one dimension this is fine, but uh, so, uh, you, so actually you should remove the delta when you write down when you incorporate a term like this when you incorporate a term uh, like this into the Lagrangian k equals 1 to n suppose there are n particles or n rods which are undergoing one dimensional motion one dimensional rotation motion then you will get a contribution to the 
Lagrangian by this. So, if the Lagrangian is a function of theta, theta dot and to this I add an extra torque term minus plus summation tau k into theta into theta k t k equals 1 to d. If you add this torque term and write down the Lagrangian equations, what do you get? Euler Lagrange equations, you get dou L by dou theta dot minus dou L by dou theta is equal to tau k. Dou L by dou theta, dou L by this, so you are applying, you are writing the Euler Lagrange equations for this whole thing. So dou L by dou of this whole thing by dou theta will be equal to dou L by dou theta plus tau k, right. If I call this constraint Lagrangian as LC, then dou LC by dou theta is equal to dou L by dou theta plus tau k, right. But in the case of a three dimensional link, you do not know how to describe the angle, right. You have so you have three Euler angles. So, you should find out the torque along the three Euler angles and add up all this all those contributions, namely along the first Euler angle, let us suppose the Euler angles are phi k, theta k and psi k. They describe the rotation matrix. They describe the rotation matrix R k t. Then you should write it as tau, tau k phi into phi k plus tau k theta into theta k plus tau k psi into psi k. That will be the contribution to the torque. This will be a contribution of the torque to the Lagrangian, right. The potential energy is the negative of tau k theta k. The potential energy due to the torque is minus of tau k theta k. But when you have a three dimensional link and you want to sit set a set of three dimensional links and you want to describe the effect of torque in coordinate free form, then what will you do? You have to replace your tau k t. First thing is you should note that you when you write tau when you write this as tau k t, tau k theta k, the contribution to the Lagrangian, you can uh, equivalently write the uh, if you con consider the the action, this is the action integral. You can change the integrand within this action by a total time derivative, right, without affecting the equations of motion. So, uh, if you have something like say tau t theta t dt integration by parts tells you that this can be written as uh, this can be written as theta times integral tau dt minus integral theta dash into integral tau ds from 0 to t and then dt. So, it comes in terms of the Euler angle on the, the derivative of the angle, right. This you can forget about because you are integrating, you are putting the two endpoints, you are substituting for the two endpoints, endpoints into these arguments, into the argument for t. So, this goes from t1 to t2, this will not contribute to the Lagrangian, this will contribute. So, an equivalent way to describe the effect of the torque in terms of angular velocities would be to define a tau tilde function an integral of the torque to be tau s ds from 0 to t and then write this as minus tau uh, minus tau tilde t into theta dash t dt. So, the contribution of the torque to the Lagrangian can also be written in this form. Now, if you have a three dimensional, if you have a three dimensional link and tau t t is the torque tensor, t t is the torque tensor then obviously a generalization of this should be half trace of tt multiplied by in place of theta dash you will put the angular velocity of the link relative to the moving frame because the motor is fixed relative to the frame in which the motor is fixed relative to the is fixed at the point pk pk minus 1 around which the kth link is swiveling so you can uh, you have to replace this by T, t, if t is a torque, then t tilde t is a torque tensor and this multiplied by the angular velocity tensor. You have to get, you have to write down the contribution to the Lagrangian as given by this. Now, if you take, if you, if you take for example, see what, what do you mean by t, t, what do you mean by the torque tensor? Torque tensor is, you have to give meaning to the torque tensor and you have to give meaning to the angular velocity tensor. Angular velocity is very simply to obtain, very simple to obtain. If you take a point r on the link at time t equal to 0, then after time t it has moved to this point. So, it is this point I call as r t. So, the velocity of that point is dr by dt equals r dash t acting on r, which can also be written as r dash t into r inverse t acting on r t r. But r t r is nothing but r t. So, I can write this equation as simply the rate of change of r t is equal to omega t times r t, where omega t is given by r dash t into r inverse t, where r, r t is the rotation matrix. 
So, this is a 3 cross 3 matrix, but you where, uh, but you already know that you can write down if a point moves around, if a point moves around an axis, if a point moves around an axis with an angular velocity of omega, with an angular velocity of omega and r is a point, then its velocity is given by omega cross r. Okay, V can be written as omega cross r or in matrix notation, this can be written as matrix vector notation, it can be written as omega times r where omega. You see, if you want to write down omega cross r, you can write it as omega 2 x 3 minus omega 3 x 2 in terms of components, then omega 3 x 1 minus omega 1 x 3, then omega 1 x 2 minus omega 2 x 1, you can write it in this form, which can also be written as something multiplied by x 1 x 2 x 3. What is multiplied by x 1 x 2 x 3? Omega 2 x 3 minus omega 3 x 2 0 then omega 3 x 1, omega 3 x 1 minus omega 1 x 3 0, then omega 1 x 2 minus omega 2 x 1 0. So, this can be written, this is the velocity. That means, in matrix vector notation, you can write it as omega times r, where omega is the angular velocity relative to the fixed frame. So, you could write down the contribution to the torque as simply the contribution of the torque tensor, the contribution of the torque tensor to the Lagrangian, you can write it as half integral trace of t tilde t multiplied by multiplied by omega t dt, where omega t is the angular velocity tensor. That is because uh, if you write it in terms of components, you see you have v is equal to omega r and uh, uh, omega r can be written as omega 3 x 2. So, here you write it as x 1, x 2, x 3, then omega 2 x 3, omega 2 x 3 minus omega 3 x 2 0, then omega 3 x 1 minus omega 1 x 3 0, then omega 1 x 2 minus omega 2 x 1 0. So, this is the angular velocity tensor and I want to and the contribution of the torque is nothing but tau 1, uh, tau 1 tilde omega 1 plus tau 2 tilde omega 2 plus tau 3 tilde omega 3. This should be the contribution of the torque to the Lagrangian as we just saw because there are 3 degrees of freedom regarding the, rota rota regarding the rotation. So, if I denote this by omega and I simply and likewise I write the torque as torque tensor as minus tau 3 tau 2 then tau 1 0 minus tau 3 0 minus tau 1 minus tau 1 and then minus tau 2 tau 1 0, the torque tensor where tau j is the torque corresponding to the jth rotational degree of freedom. That is if you have 3 Euler angles phi theta and psi, then tau 1 cross tau, tau 1 is tau phi rotation rotation by an angle phi around an appropriate axis, tau theta is rotation by an angle theta and tau psi is the torque for rotation around the angle psi. Then the total contribution to the torque is given to the of the torque to the Lagrangian is tau phi phi plus tau theta theta plus tau psi psi or equivalent to minus tau phi tilde phi dot minus tau theta, tau theta tilde theta dot minus tau psi tilde psi dot. So, if you if you multiply these two, if you look at trace of if you write down t tilde as the integral of this. So, likewise I define t I can define t tilde as the integral of this from 0 to t which is same as minus of. So, t tilde is 0 minus tau 3 tilde tau 2 tilde, tau 3 tilde, 0 tau 1 tilde and then tau 2 tilde, tau 1 tilde 0 like this. Then I can write down the contribution as t tilde into omega half. The half sign will come because if you take the tra trace of tau tilde and omega, if you multiply these two, you will each term will occur twice. Tau 1 omega 1 will occur twice, tau 2 omega 2 will occur twice tau 3 omega 3 will occur th twice. So, you put a factor of half and this is the total contribution to the Lagrangian. So, what is the what are the Euler Lagrange equal, what is the total Lagrangian of the system when torques are taken into account? You write down the Lagrangian as after constraining and taking into account torque, you write down the Lagrangian as half summation trace of R k dash t j k j R j dash of t k and j go from 1 to d, 
minus summation k goes from 1 to d then r k t r k t xi k comma e 3 and then you put uh, the torque term namely minus half summation trace of t k tilde t into uh, omega omega k t is uh, nothing but uh, the k link has suffered a rotation the k link has suffered a rotation s r k t related to the k minus 1th link so you have to write down the contribution of the tor and the and the motor is attached to the k minus 1th pivotal point that means it is attached to p k minus 1 the motor is attached to p k minus 1 and the kth link swivels around this p k minus 1 point so you have to take you have to write it as uh, r k dash t r k dash t and then uh, r k t inverse r k t inverse so uh, in that way uh, k goes from 1 to d that is because omega k as we just saw is given by r k dash r k inverse right you wrote v as omega cross r you in coordinate matrix vector form this became omega into r on the other hand you could write down the position after time t as r t into r so its velocity is r dash t into r which can also be written as r dash t r inverse t into r r t r so you could write down you could say that the velocity after time t is nothing but r dash t r t inverse into r t where r t is r t r so this so you can identify r dash t r t inverse with omega t with angular velocity tensor and you get this euler lagrange equations now you want to write this in terms of coordinates after you set up all the entire lagrangian and write down the euler lagrange equations of motion you get an equation of the form rk double dash of t see if you differentiate with respect to if you differentiate say for example half trace of r k t dash j k j r j t dash t if you take the variational derivative with respect to r j you will get this right so uh, and you integrate by parts then this will become this will come here right so if you look at the coefficient of delta r j t it is r k double dash into j k j whereas if you look at the coefficient if you try to take the variational derivative this comes out to be the variational energy of the variational derivative variational derivative of trace of uh, there is no minus half here right it is simply half of course you could you would get another factor of delta r k if you take the variational derivative with respect to r k t so if you take the trace of if you take the potential energy potential energy of the kth link has the form r k t sorry it is s k t it is s k t and i am adding all the potential energy so each term has the form xi k e 3 if you take the variational derivative of this okay it should have been sk because i wrote everything in terms of skt so this is sjt remember that skt is the cumulative rotation rk rk minus 1 etc r1 so if you take the variational derivative of this with respect to skt it will be delta skt xi k comma e3 so if you equate the coefficients of uh, if you equate the coefficients of uh, delta s k t to delta s k t to 0 the coefficient of delta s j here is simply equal to j k j j k j transpose s k double dash of t summed over all the k's that will be the coefficient of delta s j t coming from here likewise you will have a term coming from the variation derivative of the first part so this half will cancel out when you take that into account you will get a double derivative in s k t this will give you what the this can be written as trace of e3 this is e3 transpose this this right so this can be written as delta s k t into xi k into e3 transpose so its coefficient is xi k e3 transpose so you will get some constant matrix here right so you will get a constant matrix of the form say f k uh, No, just try to see your potential energy if you write down the potential energy of the kth link 
what does it come out to be? The potential energy of the kth link, this is P1, this is P2. So the third link, if you write down the potential energy, it is, uh, you have to look at the position of this point, right? The position of this point originally occupied by, originally which, which was at L3, it has, supply, it has suffered a rotation. First you suffer, first you apply a rotation R1T to P1 and then you apply a rotation R2T, R1T to P2 minus P1. So it has gone to this point plus uh, R3T, R1, this has gone to rotation R1, this has gone to rotation R2 and uh, uh, you apply, this is not applied to P2 minus P1, right. This is applied to R2T, R1T. R2T, R1T has been applied to L3, L3 minus P2, right. So here you have at R1T, you have R2T, R1T and so on. So this is likewise, so everything, this can be written as S1T into P1 plus S2T, S1T into L3 minus P2 and so on. So they are all linear, so this is not S2T, S1, this is simply S1, S2T. So S2T into L2, L3 minus P2 and so on. So this is a linear functional of S1T, S2T, etc., SKT. So it will all contribute a constant term to the Euler-Lagrange equations. Then you will have a term coming from the constraint equation, constraint term, namely lambda KT into SKT transpose SKT minus I. So you take the delta with respect to SKT, what will it give you? It will give you trace of lambda KT multiplied by SK transpose delta SK, okay, plus uh, delta SK transpose SK. So this will be nothing but trace of, this is the same as trace of uh, lambda k sk transpose and then I can take a transpose of this whole thing to bring, uh, so this will be, you, this will be uh, plus lambda k plus lambda k transpose, bring this to this side, trace ab is equal to trace ba and trace of a transpose is trace of a. If you use these two conditions, you can write trace of lambda k into delta SK transpose into SK. This can be written as trace of SK lambda K delta SK transpose, which is same as trace of delta SK into lambda K transpose SK transpose. So you could write this as, uh, and this is also trace of lambda K transpose SK transpose delta SK. So lambda K transpose SK transpose, SK transpose into delta SK is nothing but trace of lambda k plus lambda k transpose into sk transpose into delta sk. So this will contribute a linear term namely lambda k plus lambda k transpose sk to the Euler-Lagrange equations. And then if you pull up all these equations, what do you get? You get, uh, you get an Euler-Lagrange equation of the form some say, some coefficients mkj multiplied by rj double dash at t summed over all j's. Uh, plus uh, you had the potential energy and you had a, a Lagrange multiplied term plus lambda k plus lambda k transpose at t multiplied by it will be uh, it is not rj transpose it is sj trans sj double dash here you will have sj of t transpose. Okay, you have uh, uh, delta S J transpose. You will have something like this, and uh, uh, into S K T, into S K T, and then you will have terms like uh, some constants, like some F K, and then you will have trace of. If you look at the torque term, that was T K tilde into omega K, which was R, which was nothing but uh, R K. Rk dash t into Rkt inverse, which is Rkt inverse is also Rkt transpose. So this you could express in terms of SKS, right, to take its variational derivative. That is, you could write Rkt as simply uh, Skt into Sk minus 1t inverse or Sk minus 1t transpose, because Sk was defined to be Rk, Rk minus 1, etc., R1, right, which can be written as Rk into Sk minus 1, right. 
So, you will get this and this whole thing will come out to be equal to 0. You will you take the variational derivative of this, this will give you a non-linear term. So, it will give you some function of some function of um, all the uh, it will give you some function of all the SKs okay, of all the SJs it will give you some function of all the SK SJ equal to 1 to D equal to 0. Now, without even bothering about the specific form of this equation, we can try to simplify things in the Lie algebra domain. So, in the Lie algebra domain, you will represent each SKT as e to the power some XKT, where XKT is a skew symmetric 3 cross 3 matrix. So, XKT is contained in R 3 cross 3 and XK transpose is equal to minus XK. So, in turn, I can write down, you see, if you look at the, if you look at any uh, 3 cross 3 skew symmetric matrices, matrix, it can be written as a linear combination. What is a rotation for example? A rotation is delta r is equal to omega cross r. Any rotation around an axis by an angle omega can be written in this form, which can be written as omega 2 x 3 minus omega 3 x 2, omega 3 x 1 minus omega 1 x 3, then omega 1 x 2 minus omega 2 x 1, right, which is nothing but 0. Uh, minus omega 3, omega 2, then omega 3 x 1 0 minus omega 1, then omega 1 x 2 minus omega 2 0, which can be written as omega 1 times say L 1 plus omega 2 times L 2 plus omega 3 times L 3, where L 1, L 2, L 3 are, the, are, are form a basis for the Lie algebra of SO 3, namely a set of 3 linearly independent skew symmetric matrices, real matrices. So, L 1 comes out to be what? It comes out to be 0, 0, 0, then 0, 0, minus 1, then 1, 0 like this and L 2 is nothing but 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, then 0, 0, 0, then minus 1, 0, 0. This forms a basis for the Lie algebra of uh, skew, 3 cross 3 skew symmetric matrices and L 3 is the coefficient of omega 3 namely 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, any 3 cross 3 matrix can be sym skew symmetric matrix can be represented as a linear combination of L1, L2, L3. So, I can parameterize my XK, I can parameterize my SK, SKT is as e to the power XKT which is equal to e power X1 T L1 plus X2 T L2 plus X3 3 into L3. Right, where x1, x2, x3 are real valued functions of time and then using the standard formula for the for the derivative of the exponential map in Lie algebra, you can construct, you can convert this system of differential equations for the rotation matrix, matrix R, Rk into a system of nonlinear differential equations for these, uh, for these uh, uh, functions, real valued functions of time x1, t, x2, t, x3, t. That means, with each uh, what I do is with each link, with each SKT, I associate, let us call it as SK1 T into L1 plus SK2 T into L2 plus SK3 T into L3, right. This is exponential XKT. Then the formula for the differential of the exponential map, if you have S is equal to e power x, then ds by dt uh, or uh, if you uh, if you say uh, let us say let us say I have e power x plus t y where x and y are three matri are two matrices and I call this as f of t. In the standard formula for the differential of the exponential map which you will find in any standard book on Lie algebras and Lie groups and Lie algebras in particular you can look at the uh, very nice book by V S Varadarajan Lie groups Lie algebras and their representations that can be written as at t equal to zero and t equal to 0, this can be written as e power x times i minus e power minus add x divided by add x acting on y, where add x, add x acting on y is given by the, add x is defined by the operator, when acting on y it gives you x comma y, which is x y minus y x, x y minus y x. So, uh, if you expand this in powers, if you write down, if you write down i minus e power minus add x by add x, that will be written as i minus i minus add x plus add x square by 2 factorial minus etcetera 
divided by add x. So that will give you add x minus add x square add x square add, sorry it will give you y minus add x you are dividing by add x right. So it will give you i minus add x divided by factorial 2 plus add x square divided by factorial 3 minus etc. or equivalent you can write it as summation minus 1 power n minus 1 add x power n by uh, add x power n n plus 1 add x power n by factorial n plus 1 then uh, n goes from 0 to infinity or uh, i minus add x by 2. So, uh, minus 1 power uh, 0 1 minus 1 power n. So, this will be 1 minus add x by the, okay. So, it will be add x power n it will be add x power n into minus 1 power n minus 1 power n n equals 0 to infinity and add x acting on y add x acting on y is x comma y add x square acting on y is equal to x comma x comma y and so on add x power n acting on y power n acting on y is nothing but x comma x comma x comma extra x comma y like this. So, uh, you can uh, this gives you the formula for the differential of the exponential map if you want to apply this to our problem you represent s k t as e power x k t you represent it as this and you write d x k by d t as from this formula which we just saw you will get e power x k t into g of add x k t x k t acting on x k dash of t where g of z is equal to 1 minus e power minus z by z right. So, uh, you will get a system of equations and you can uh, by writing x k as by writing x k as x k 1 into l 1 plus x k 2 into l 2 plus x k 3 into l 3 you will get nonlinear differential equations for the x k's right. Now, uh, you get the whole system the link equations for the system of n uh, for this robotic system consisting of n links you get it in the form of a system of nonlinear differential equations of the form d square x k t let us say the j the kth link and the jth coordinate by d t square is equal to some function of x k or it will be some function of f k of x uh, j m t so all the x j m's or let us write it as rather x k so x l s t where l goes from there are d links and s goes from 1 to 3 as well as the velocities namely x l s dash of t l equals 1 to d s equals 1 to 3 and then torque forces namely uh, you will get torque terms so, it will, uh, it will also involve external torque inputs which I represented it represent as a vector u q t that is the input. So, this gives you a system of differential equations for the robot and uh, it is completely described in the Lie algebra domain. Now, we want to look at the filtering problem when you try to filter uh, when it, what, do you, what do you what exactly do you want to do you want to estimate the link coordinates namely x k j s the link angles. So, you want to estimate the x k j s as a function of time t when there is noise. So, here the noise will appear in the form of some white noise process or uh, noise processes which will satisfy which satisfy stochastic differential equations driven by Brownian motion and Poisson process and so on. And you take measurements on the robot how do you take measurements the measurements will be some function of some function of some function of x k j will be some function of the link angles and the link velocities the link velocities and you could have some noise also to it. So, you will have some v k t or let us call it as v m t. So, h m of all these and you will have. Uh, so, when you write down the uh, to formulate the uh, filtering problem you have to write down the measurement in the form in a differential form. So, the measurement taken during the time interval t to t plus d t can be represented in this form where v m t's are uh, Brownian motions 
or DVMT by DTs are Gaussian white noise processes. And more generally, in the state equations, instead of putting uh, WKJ to be WKJ to be a Markov uh, diffusion process, you can allow it to be uh, an independent increment process. In which case, the XKJs will, although the XKJs won't form a Markov process, it is clear that XKJ along with XKJ dash, these these will form a Markov process because they satisfy first order differential equations driven by an independent by the derivative time derivative of an independent increment process of a sequence of independent of a set of independent increment process. So, they will form a Markov process. So, generally in the filtering problem what you can do is in the filtering problem what you can do is you can construct as you assume there is a system of variables stochastic variables x k t k goes from 1 to n they represent the xkj let's let say they represent all the link angles uh, at any time t or more generally they represent both x the position and the velocity so xkt they correspond to if you look at the aggregate of all these state vectors state variables they correspond to xkj t and xkj dash at t right as k and j run over as k runs over 1 to d and j runs over 1 to 3 so this forms a markov process so you can look at you can assume that you have a, a vector valued Markov process xt built out of all the xks. So, this is a Markov process with a transition generator kt. That means that expected value of phi of x t plus dt given xt is equal to x. This is nothing but phi of x phi of x plus a generator kt which is a linear operator acting on this function phi at x into dt plus small order delta t small order dt and this kernel can be represented in terms of delta functions and maybe other functions also as this generator is called the kt is called the infinitesimal generator of the markov process its action on phi can be represented as integral kt xy phi y dy for example if your uh, if your xt is a let us say if your uh, x t is a simply a Brownian motion process a vector valued Brownian motion process say b 1 t b 2 t etcetera b d t then what is the generator of this process they are all standard Brown, independent Brownian motions then k t becomes simply equal to half summation dou square by dou x j square j equals 1 to d and k t acting on phi x k t acting on phi x is nothing but half summation j goes from 1 to d dou square phi x by dou x j square which can also be written as see dou square phi of x by dou x j square can also be written as integral of delta double dash of x j or x j minus y j into phi of uh, uh, you can write it as if you sum over all the j's j goes from 1 to d this can be written as delta double dash of x j minus y j summation j goes from 1 to d into phi y d y is that right. So, the kernel here is a uh, is in terms of is expressed in terms of the double derivative of the Dirac delta function if you integrate over if you integrate this over y using integration by parts then all the delta double dash will get transferred to derivatives all these derivatives acting on the delta function will get transferred to derivatives acting on this phi function and you will get the Laplacian operator acting on phi x. If it is a Markov, if it is a Poisson process, if the noise, okay, if x t is a, see in general what you are having, you are saying that x t is generated using an independent increment process, right, d by d t of x t is equal to sum of function of f of t x t plus the derivative of an independent increment process which I call as w t. So, it will follow that x t is a Markov process. W, if you take w t for example as uh, the typical model for w t is to regard it as a sum of Poisson process derivatives, independent Poisson process derivatives d n k by d t k goes from 1 to m where c k s are vectors plus let us say some Brownian some matrix acting on a Brownian motion process right some matrix q acting on a Brownian motion derivative of Brownian motion a standard Brownian motion. So, Gaussian white noise was plus Poisson white noise. Poisson noise comes into the picture when there are jerks. For example, when you operate a robot using when a hand operator acts on the robot using his fists or using some machines, 
then suddenly since his hand is subject to jerks or the hand may have some sort of a disease like Parkinson's disease, there will be jerks on the robot and those jerks can be modeled by using a Poisson process. So, this is also an independent Poisson process and Gaussian and Brownian motion, they are both independent increment process. So, the derivatives will become white noise, that means that at different times they will be uncorrelated with each other and uh, you can find out the generator of a Poisson process very simply. How do you find out the generator of a Poisson process? Simply consider phi of t, phi of nt and you look at d of this. Now, d of this is nothing but you see nt can increase in steps of 1, either it increases at time dt or it is 0. That means, at any time t either d and t is a 1 or a 0, which is same as saying that d and t square uh, sorry any function. So, if it increase if d and t is 1 then nt goes to nt plus 1 in the next time interval. In the next time duration it goes to nt plus 1 if nt makes a jump at time t. So, it will be this multiplied by dnt. That is if dnt is 1 then d of this will be phi nt plus 1 minus phi nt because nt has changed from nt to nt plus 1. If dnt is 0 there is no change so it is 0. So, this tallies with this. Now, I take the expected value of this quantity given nt equal to n, nt equal to n. Then what do I get? This is equal to simply phi of n plus 1 minus phi of n into expected value of multiplied by expected value of d and t given n t equal to 1, n t equal to n which is nothing but lambda d t, where lambda is the rate of the Poisson process. So, this can be written as okay, this can be written as lambda times this into d t. So, this will become the generator of the Poisson process namely the generator k t uh, acting on phi at the point n is simply equal to lambda times phi n plus 1 minus phi n. It can also be written as lambda times integral uh, delta n plus 1 minus y minus delta n minus y multiplied by phi y dy. So, this is also the form k n y into phi y dy, it can be brought, brought into the kernel form. So, uh, we are now interested in looking applying filtering theory to estimate the state of the robot namely the link angles and the link velocities namely xj's and the xj dots and what measurements are you taking? You are taking measurements on the end effector positions. So, for example, you are measuring the at the tip you have of the tip of the last robot link you have a camera attached and that camera or a ca you have a light attached and that light and that flashlight is sending signals or you may have uh, you may have uh, optical signals coming from uh, sources located at different points on the ro on the robot links. So, these so the resulting measure the resulting measurement which you make is a function of the SKTs namely the configuration of the robot and it is also a, and there could be noise. So, the resultant measurement coming because electromagnetic signals coming from these points can be will be modeled as spherical waves coming from different points and uh, since the location of these points changes with time depending on the rotations applied to the different links the measurements will uh, be a function of these rotations plus noise right and or it may also be a function of the velocity. For example, there could be a Doppler shift if a if a source of light located on the on the on some of the links in the robot that moves then its frequency will get altered in accordance with in a, and the change in the frequency will be proportional to the velocity of the velocity of the source ok. The projection of the velocity along the normal direction that is a familiar red shift and all which you have in relativity. So, in general the measurement which you take the measurement which you take it will be a function of it will be a function of the SKS, it will also be a function of the SK dash. The position since the velocity of any point on this link can be expressed in terms of the rotation matrices SKTs. So, it will be a function of these rotations dt plus a noise term dvt. So, you call it as dvmt hmt and dzm the mth measurement or these SKTs can be uh, expressed in terms of the angles which I said the Lie algebra coordinates xkj namely you had written skt as e power xj skj t into lj summation j goes from 1 to 3. So, you could express this equality in terms of hm tilde of the xkj's plus dv dt plus dvmt. So, in general you are having a model like this xt is a Markov process Markov process with generators 
a generator kt measurement model dz t is equal to h of t comma xt dt plus dvt where dvt vt is a independent is a gaussian vt is a brownian motion or equivalently dvt by dt is white gaussian noise and you have to you want to construct a conditional expectation of a function of the state at time t given all the measurements up to time t so you construct an estimate you call this as phi t hat given t so kushner and kalyanpur showed us how to get a, how to derive a stochastic partial differential equation in the case when uh, for phi t hat given t stochastic partial differential equation in the case when uh, x is an arbitrary markov process the equation is very simple it, it can be derived by the same method of namely the reference probability approach which i had taken earlier while formulating the belyavkin filter equations so it will be of the form d phi hat t given t actually it is conventional to write phi hat t given t as pi t phi so you have d pi t phi t phi t pi d pi t phi equals this is expected value of phi of xt given xs given zs given zs zs for s less than or equal to t so this is equal to pi t of the the generator of the markov process phi t of the generator of the markov process kt acting on phi dt plus phi t of uh, phi t of phi into phi t of h phi t of h minus sorry it should have been phi t of phi h minus phi t of phi phi t of h transpose into d into r inverse so r is the r is the covariance of the measurement noise so r inverse r is defined by if you have if your measurement model was dz equal to h of x dt plus dv then r is defined by dv dv transpose is equal to r dt that is r is the covariance of the differential of the covariance matrix of the differential of the measurement noise process so this r inverse multiplied by dz t minus pi t h dt this equation we have derived and then we may have to make an approximation to this equation to arrive at because this equation defines this filter is an infinite dimensional filter if you try to calculate for example the conditional expectations of the moments at time t then it will involve conditional expectations of the higher moments higher than the given moment at time t for example if you take phi s for example if you take phi of x s let us say x1 x2 then you will get d of pi t x1 x2 is equal to in terms of this but kt phi may contain may kt phi may not be a simple function it will not be just a product of x1 and x2 or something lesser it will in general be expandable as a taylor series in the x1 x2 etc xn where x1 x2 xn are the components of the state vector likewise pi t phi into pi t h it will contain pi t into phi h that will contain higher order moments because phi is x1 x2 and you when you multiply x1 x2 by hx then third moments and fourth moments and higher moments will be involved and then you take the conditional expectation so it's an infinite dimensional filter to calculate the estimate of the nth order moment of the state process you need the estimates of the n plus 1th order n plus 2th order n plus 3th order moments and so on so it's impossible to handle this on a digital computer on a digital computer you can hope only to derive some approximation to this filter next time i shall discuss how to derive the extended kalman filter from uh, the kushner kalyanpur filter and then how to apply it to the robot problem to estimate the link angles in the presence of noise and then we do a large deviation analysis of this system the large deviation analysis of the system involves writing down the writing down an approximate equation for the error state estimation error namely xt minus xt hat x hat t given t uh, approximate linear differential equation incorporating controller terms feedback controller terms into the differential equations for the state of the robot and then uh, to choose these controller coefficients in accordance with the large deviation principle namely you calculate when the noise amplitude is very small you try to calculate the probability approximate probability that the trajectory will not deviate from a desired trajectory by an amount greater than epsilon over a whole time interval 0 to t that means you are you are computing a probability which is a function of the entire path for an event which is a function of the entire path 
and you should, using large deviation theory we can get an approximation to this probability. Large deviation theory tells you how to calculate approximately probabilities of very rare events. For example, if a sequence of uh, if you take a sequence of independent random variables and take the time average, you know that it converges to the mean of this uh, of this of each random of any one random variable. But at what rate does it converge? You want to know what is the probability that this time average will deviate from the mean by an amount greater than epsilon for large values of n. When the averages have been taken over very large samples, the probability of its deviating from the mean is very small, but how to calculate that. Likewise, when the noise in a system is very small, then you can ask what is the probability that the system will deviate from the nominal trajectory that is the noiseless trajectory by an amount greater than epsilon and this probability is very small because the noise is small. Right. So, you can get approximations to this probability and control the parameters of this system so that this probability is minimized and the rate function in used in large deviation theory is a very helpful tool in this. Next time I shall explain to you how this can be carried out this program. Okay. Thank you.